Hello, this is David Wamsey, and on this Beaver Builder website strip down, I'm talking with Doug Bellchamber, who's a British developer based in London, who you might know for creating a couple of free Beaver Builder plugins, but he also does some great Beaver Builder related blogging over at WPDevelopers. Dot co dot uk he's a really really lovely guy who i've now had the pleasure of meeting a couple of times when we did the recording for this it failed the first time so we kindly did it again and it's lost some of the spontaneity and the sound is still not that perfect but it's good enough i think to go out there so i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you on the other side hello doug welcome to our beaver builder strip down Hi, David. It's great to be here. Well, we better let everyone know that this is our second attempt to do this, isn't it? Because Skype <laughs> failed badly. It is. It is. Technology will only get you so far. <laughs> and as I said last time, we should be doing this in the pub and then we wouldn't have these issues. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's the last time we met in person. I went to see your talk at the London WordPress meetup, which was fantastic. You were talking about, well, you're trying to convince, as you always are, developers to take page builders like Beaver Builder more seriously. Yeah. But I know you from, well, actually, a YouTube video and the development of a couple of plugins and i think that's where many of the beaver builder folks will know you from for making the wpd bb additions plugin yep. which is fantastic and also the wpd beaver pop-ups plugin which yes. I, I use both love them anyway sorry tell us a little bit for those who don't know what you do when you're not doing that kind of stuff yeah okay so i i do split my time i i do WordPress consultancy and, and site builds, but the core of my business really at the moment is technical marketing and conversion optimization. And that's where I help businesses get a bit more of their websites. I try and help them increase sales and leads from their websites by looking at their Google Analytics and uh, stuff like heat maps and session recordings and try and build up a bigger picture of what people are doing on the sites and just help my clients improve the revenue per visitor. And the site we're looking at today is exactly that, is it you, your business site? And it's fuel.io. Now, I love this site. It's really quite a simple site, but it does such a great job of explaining why you might want to take conversions more seriously. Really, I guess the first thing that I would ask somebody on a strip down is what the client was looking for. So maybe I'll ask you to be, you know, you are your own client on this one. So do you want to tell me a little bit about how you decided what you needed for this site? and what you yeah. needed to do beyond the trial and error of which there was a lot of um what i really wanted to achieve was guiding people through a narrative uh, that explained what the issue is that they might be having uh, and then uh showing that in a visual way we'll come to that in just a second and then explaining how i can help them solve those issues um so at the at the very top, the thing we're looking at now is what I would call the hero area on the website. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a very short, snappy um, headline. I didn't want, you know, a, a sort of fluffy headline that would take too long to read and people would just scan over. And I thought this was quite impactful. Essentially, there's there's four words in it. Get more website, lead sales or bookings. And there's a few other bits here which are, are sort of just asking questions rather than saying what I do and, you know, about me and blah, blah, blah. I, I wanted to start, I wanted people to start asking questions immediately and, and sort of just get, get them thinking about their own website. So yeah. I hope at this stage I've, I've caught the attention of the person who's visiting. Can um, I ask you something about that just before I move on? Because I know I'll forget. Yeah. Just did you set yourself your own, you know, uh, you build websites for other people, don't you? So do you ever, you know, we're, we're the kind of people who ask our clients all the time to give us a brief and who is their target audience? Did you do that process on yourself or was you like me where you kind of just dive in and don't take any notice of the things that you say to other people? <laughs> well, I, I think certainly at the start, I had the best intentions to treat this like a proper project. Yeah. And I think I, I, I certainly mapped out the, the boundaries of it, but you know, I, and I started kind of designing the the hero unit off the back of my my own brief, but it was all it was a little woolly. And then once I'd started with that, I was gone. I was sort of just playing around and you know writing code and adding stuff in. So so 
everything kind of <laughs> went out the window. But uh, <laughs> it, it did start with a you know an approximate foundation. Okay, so let's uh, let's head down to the next section. And um, again, I'm I'm trying to ask questions. I'm not I'm I'm trying to avoid talking about myself. I want people asking questions of their own website. So, do you want more visitors or do you want more sales? Very often uh, with clients, they say, well, you know, we want to rank higher in Google for a certain keyword. Or we want more traffic. Or we want more exposure on social media. But they're not asking the crucial questions of what that translates to as an end product. They, they're not thinking about how all of this stuff ties together. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here. So another impactful statement is for every 100 visitors to your website, how many leave without purchasing? And on average, that number is 95. And in fact, it can be higher in a lot of instances. So for every 100 people, 95 are just disappearing and not interacting with you. And I think that's a, that's a huge number. Uh -huh. And I just sort of believe that improving that number, the people that interact with your site, whether it's submitting their details as a lead or buying from you, I think if you can improve that, then it negates the need for fighting for more traffic. And that, that's kind of what I like in getting more traffic as. A, it's a battle yeah. in dealing with Google's algorithms or Facebook's algorithms or whatever it might be. You're, you're, you're constantly pumping out content and you don't know if it's going to work or not until yeah. you're three months in or six months in and you've invested a lot of time and money. So what I'm trying to do is just get more from the traffic that you're already getting. So to highlight this a bit more, I've got a conversion calculator so you can plumb in the number of visitors you get, the number of orders or leads you get and the order or lead value. Yeah. And it will tell you below what your currently your current monthly revenue is, your conversion rate is, and this is the crucial thing, how much on average each visitor that lands on your site is worth to you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to improve. So I think by doing it in this way and sort of spitting it out in plain English, it just explains what I'm trying to achieve or, or what people should expect from their website. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why I love this site, because I thought, oh, that is such a fantastic way of explaining the concept to someone. Can I just ask you, stepping back a bit more, did the move towards conversion come out of the fact that you generally were working with clients who were concentrating on traffic? Were you solving a problem that you had with work that you did, or is it just you felt this was missing in the market? Well, it, it was a bit of both, I guess. I always wanted to, uh, and I, I read a ton of books on this, ton of blog articles and watch videos and so forth. And when I was building websites, I always wanted to build them with purpose. And that was that was my thing. I didn't want websites just to be an empty cost. But it, it, it's the ongoing stuff that really makes that happen rather than the initial build. A lot of people will say uh, the websites that they create are conversion optimized or themes that you can buy are conversion optimized. And that's not entirely true because you, you can't really optimize for conversions until you've got traffic and you see how people are interacting with you mm -hmm. specifically. You know, it's not as easy as just chucking a theme on your site and, and hoping for the best. You've, you've got to put in the work and it is a process that takes time. You know, it might take a, a month or a couple of months. The more traffic you get, the quicker it is, but it does take time. It's a process that you can just constantly improve on. So, so that, that was that really. And, um, and I, I've done a bit of paid traffic work in the past where I've I'll run campaigns on Google AdWords and, and Facebook. And you kind of see the whole picture then. You see from the click all the way through to people landing on your site. And so it made sense to optimize that side of things. I'm very much a data-driven person. I'm, I'm not so good with the creative stuff. I'm not a writer. I'm not a designer. But I, I like to look at data and make sense of it. And, and this was sort of my ideal in that sense because it fits my personality but is also something that people need. Yes. Well, you say you're not a writer and you're not a designer, but th <laughs> this, <laughs> this is beautifully designed and the copy is fantastic on it. So is this all from you or did you get any help at all? Well, the, the design is luck. I, I will say that from the start. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I got lucky with it's, you know, it's very simple. And I think that's all I can manage, but it, it looks pretty nice. So I'm, I'm happy with that, but it was mm -hmm. luck. 
with the copy, I did have a bit of help from a copywriter, but I did unpick what they did and put it into this kind of journey that I'm taking people down here. So yeah, there's, there's the words, uh, there's certainly some help there, but I have structured it in a different way that than was given to me by the copywriter. And do you read those kind of articles by copywriters? Are you are you somebody who reads the Copy Hacker blog? I, I, I did read them uh, a while back, but I just, I didn't feel a connection to them. I just thought this is not me. I, I like code and I like data and, and you know, I read some, I, I read some books as well on, on the subject. Uh-huh. And it's all very interesting, and and I kind of like the, the psychology and stuff behind some of these things, but it's not something I can apply myself to. And I'd much rather work with someone who that is the thing they do. I'd much rather they do what they do best, and I do what I do best, and kind of merge in the middle. But, but it strikes me a little bit that it's hard to know the boundaries between what a copywriter does and what the designer does and, and how it's all linked in again with what you as the client needs as well to happen. So in some ways, I guess you being the client, you're going to, for your own website, you're going to be the person who really determines what that copy's got to say and whether it reflects your personality. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, on, on the flip side, I think as, as a control freak a bit, I, I I sort of realized that I need to let go. I need to say, like, you know, you're better at words than me. You, you say, you, this this is my story. You can tell it in in, in a way that you see fit. Um, because otherwise, I'd, I'd just end up, as I nearly did here, just writing the whole thing myself, despite forking out a lot of money for a copywriter. Yeah. Okay, so let's head down a bit further. Uh, we're just breaking up the page with a call to action. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're explaining how uh so so we know what the problem is and now we're saying how i can help improve this conversion rate that i was talking about earlier and so we start with conversion optimization and there's a few techniques that i'm using to achieve that uh there's technical marketing which is where we look at analytics so i I like to dive into a customer's google analytics uh, account and just figure out what's going on on there and you know when you start working with data the sort of quantitative uh, analysis and you overlay that with the visitor behavior analysis the heat mapping session recordings surveys you really start to paint a vivid picture of what and why stuff is happening on your website yes technical seo uh, again i i don't fully subscribe to the whole doing seo is a is a it's a good thing but i do you know, I, I do believe having a solid foundation is important, having a good site structure uh, in terms of content paths, but also the the code that makes up your site and having good solid technical SEO on that yes. front. And you know, it's not to say that SEO is completely dead, but I, I, I think there's a, I sort of believe SEO is a consequence of other marketing initiatives such as PR. And really what I'm doing with the technical SEO front is, you know, I, I can do things like keyword research and competitor yes. analysis and, and sort of feed that to the creative folk who can interpret that and build their creative campaigns accordingly. And this is touched on here by the competitive insights. So we can see what other what competitors are doing in search and in PPC, and it all builds up a, a bigger picture to inform my client as to what they should be doing next. Yes. And you'll see a pop-up just appeared. That is the Beaver pop-ups plugin. So we'll get to that shortly. I, I won't close yeah. it. I'll just leave that there. So if we get down a bit further, this, this is where I am saying you need to meet this criteria to work with me. It's, it's not to disregard certain businesses, but you do need to have a certain amount of traffic and income to make this worthwhile. It's not for startups, for example. You, you can't start with zero traffic and get any meaningful data out of it. So I'm stipulating that we need to see at least 6,000 monthly visitors, which even that is fairly low. So the more, the better. We need to see at least 120,000 in annual revenue, which kind of makes it financially viable. Yes. And products or bookings must be worth at least 25 to 1,000 pounds per transaction. Or alternatively, if you're a consultancy, maybe an accountancy practice or a legal firm, then you don't need to be selling products. So I, I can work with those folks as well. So that's the who. And uh, by adding this section, it, it started to reduce the, the funnel size. Before I had this section, a lot of people were signing up and saying, yeah, I, I need this. This sounds great. 
and there'd be a you know a new business uh, or a very low traffic local business something like that and that's just not I can't yes. help those people so this section was really as a result of that and that has calmed down the the intake when I run a pay traffic campaign to this page yes yeah I, I wondered whether people were just going to click on that and just say yeah something for free I'll I'll have that and yeah, ignore and oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, have you stopped that I mean when you do go to free consultation and they get the option to fill in their details there. Is that reiterated there again? Uh, good question. I, I don't think it is. Or maybe it is. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's, been, there's been a few variations of that page, so we'll, we'll see what's live at the moment. But just having this on, on the home page, because people are reading it top to bottom and not just skimming through, uh, it, that it has helped. I've seen a, a noticeable difference just by having this section on the home page. But, you know, if I, I don't think I added it, but we'll, we will find out uh, in just a moment. Okay, so that section, we, uh, we have another call to action. And now I'm just trying to provide my credentials and sort of quantify um, yes. my service uh, by showing some names that I've worked with in the past. Um, uh, uh, there's some good names in the client roster. And they sort of also help clients you know, look at these names and say, well, okay, I'm, I'm similar to these guys. So maybe this service is right for me as well. And then there's a picture of yours truly, uh, yes. just to show that there is a human behind <laughs> uh, the scenes somewhere. Yes. Uh, and we're pretty much at the foot. So I'm just reiterating uh, what, what you can get from a, a website health check or a consultation. Yes. I mean, your site just seems to me everything that I've learned about what makes a good landing page in there. There's a social proof with your who you've worked with. There's you there so they can tell what you're all about and starts with a sort of proposition, doesn't it, of which you answer throughout the document. I like it. Yeah. I think one thing I do want to add is some more case studies to, to, to actually show some numbers behind it. And right. I have got those in, in the pipeline, but I'm, I just haven't got the time to actually push them over and, and get them into the site. So I've got to write the, or build the modules to, to actually add them to the site as well as writing the case studies themselves. And yeah, that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shall we take a look at the back end now? Or do we? Or maybe I should just talk a little bit more about the design and how did you come up with choosing your colors and fonts and that? Yeah, well, the, the design is, is luck and I've just thrown some fairly bold colors together. And, and I, I did get a bit of feedback from the Slack channel, mm. the Beaver Builder Slack channel. And folks like Adam Lacey, who's a designer, helped help mm. me just just tweak it. And you know, I had the structure before, but the colours weren't so great. So some some kind folks helped me just uh, tweak that a bit, and that was that was really nice. So and the the fonts, I tend to always use the font Railway. It's a free font in the Google fonts, and yes. it just seems to work. I, I like the bold version of it, and I like the lighter version of it, and. Unless I'm explicitly told otherwise, I will use this font. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of my favorites as well. Yeah. Uh, no, I just wondered if there was anything with the colors that you picked, whether you picked blue because it's, you know, that's kind of associated, isn't it, in design with business. And I also, another thing that maybe I've been wrongly informed, but they say that uh, orange buttons as well are more clickable as well for conversion. I mean, that's maybe a lot of well, rubbish. I, but I, I certainly wanted contrast, um, mm -hmm. but, but not not orange specifically. Um, mm -hmm. there, there was, you know, no sophisticated thought behind blue. Yes. Uh, it was, <laughs> it was, I, was I, I think I had, uh, I think I was mocking this up in uh, a product called Mockups, uh, which is a great wireframing tool, uh -huh. uh, M-O-Q-U-P-S, I don't know, dot .com, we can put a link uh, yeah. below. But yeah, I, you know, I was just sort of, scrubbing around the color picker and oh yeah that looks nice let's let's stick with that and uh yeah as i say then then adam and a couple of other folks in slack just uh, said well you know, that, that, <laughs> that doesn't quite look right i suggest you do this so eventually we got there yes probably subconsciously you do pick your colors i guess based around some moods anyways you know if if we say certain colors in psychology associated with certain things we probably know that anyway so yeah yeah. yeah, I imagine that goes on. Okay. Um, yeah, do we want to take a look at the back end? Because then we can talk a little bit about the functionality because I guess everybody's going to want to know how you managed to pull off that calculator. Ah, well, okay. Let, let, so let's jump over. We've, we've got um, 
we've got that here. So should we take a look at the plugins? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's head down here. And uh, I, I think the first thing to mention is that this site is a site in a multi-site network that I've got. And so I've got some other sites in here as well. So some of these plugins aren't uh, activated, but uh, they might be activated on other sites. Yeah. Can I ask um, you a question on that? Sorry. We were, yeah, the, sure. You know, we recorded this once, and these are completely different questions now. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's, there's folks like me who occasionally have used multi-site, but generally just for creating demos. But I've always been told of people who have problems with multi-site. So is there a good argument for using multi-site that you can put forward? I think if you've got a, a business case for it, um, if, you, if you're, for example, working in a certain uh, industry and you've got very similar clients, then it's definitely worthwhile. If you've got uh, lots of different websites that you create with different types of plugins and whatever else, then it becomes a bit trickier because all of those plugins need to be updated and they could you know, have, have a few conflicts. So although you're not using them on every site, say you run an update and that conflicts with a, another plugin, there is a chance that you could uh, cause havoc and you suddenly lose all of your uh, sites on your multi-site. But if your clients are very similar and you've got the same set of plugins, give or take a couple, yeah. then multi-site is a great candidate because then you, the, the negatives from before are now positives. You, you do only have one place mm -hmm. to run updates and uh, to add a new site is you know, it's a, it's a few mouse clicks and then you're off and running. And so mm -hmm. I think, you know, that, that, that has its benefits. And, you know, if, I know a few people that are trying to get a sort of hosted service, like a, like a monthly, mm -hmm. like almost like a um, Squarespace or Wix alternative and yes. basing that on multi-site. And this it's just such a great candidate for it. And uh, yeah, one, one place to manage stuff. And, uh, and for me with, the host that I use, it, uh, where I'm limited to the amount of WordPress installations I can have, this technically counts as one. So, um, oh. squeezing a bit more out of out of my hosting package as a result. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you're the only person I know who uses multi-site really, because I think most people I know have got the same fear I have that certain plugins won't work so well on multi-site and that they might end up with some technical issues mm -hmm. that they don't understand. But uh, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think in, in the most part you're you're safe, but um, you know some some plugins can uh, can cause issues. But they're probably causing issues behind the scenes, even if you're not using multi-site. Um, I, I don't think there's. Uh, I mean, there's there's a few instances where multi-site specifically will cause complications, but but on the whole, it's um, it's not so bad. I've uh, I, I really like using it. Yeah, there was one other thing actually with that one because it's sharing one database, isn't it? I just wondered if that ever becomes an issue at all. Would you get too heavy a database with lots of sites? Yeah, no, it's, it is in one database. Um, but then if you consider there's 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 huge multi sites with you know tens of thousands of sites attached to them, and it, they seem to do okay. But I I was speaking to someone, and my memory's a little hazy um, the other day, who was talking about splitting multi-site databases out. So uh, I, I don't know the ins and outs of it. I don't even know if it's possible or, or if he was just talking about a hypothetical, but it's certainly on some people's radar to, to split the multi-site database into individual sites. So yeah, maybe that's something I should look into and uh, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe write about. Yeah, great. I, I can already see just on your screen there because you mentioned hosting that there's a Kinsta, isn't it? That's cash. Yeah. That's your host, isn't it? That's right, yeah, yeah, and uh, and they're excellent. I I can't speak highly highly enough of them. I, I've been through a number of managed hosting providers for different sizes of clients, and uh, and I've always had issues. I've one particular managed host, and I, I won't name names, but all of a sudden WooCommerce uh, WooCommerce transactions just stopped working. The the cash that they provided it cached the, the checkout page. So all of a sudden people were unable to check out or they're seeing other people's products in their carts and stuff like that. Ooh. And, you know, it, it was, it was really nasty because then I had a lot of answering to do to my clients. Um, and yeah, so I, and I, I, I went from uh, hosting provider to hosting provider and eventually I, 
came across Kinster and they have just been absolutely fantastic. I think I've been with them now for about 18 months and I, I haven't looked back. Yeah. No, I've, I've only heard good stuff about them. It's just that they, they're in a higher price range for my clients. So that's why I haven't tried them, but. Well, there's, there's multi-site, remember? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking when you said that. I thought, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm interrupting you. Please tell us about the plugins. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, Advanced Custom Fields, I think we said last time that we should stipulate that uh, that's a temporary thing. And if Bernard's listen, listening, then that will be pods at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that, that's... In fact, I, I'm using um, ACF less and less for adding fields to uh, pages and posts, mm -hmm. um, and I'm using it more for this this thing down here, the theme settings. And that, as, as I'm digging into Beaver Builder more and more, mm -hmm. um, I'm using this less and less. And uh, I think there were about ten or fifteen options before, but now it's three, and even those. The, those three should come down to one at some point. So uh, a lot of this is going into the Beaver Builder global settings. And yeah, so it, it's really, you know, it just, it'll just it just take a few hours for me to switch it out and move to pods and, and get rid of it. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, well, I, I actually cut you short, I think, because um, that won't make sense to, I don't think, to anybody at the moment. You've got all these theme settings, which you, I think you showed me before, isn't it? On your on the page builder side of it, you can set globals. Yeah, uh, I can show you very quickly. Um, if, we, if we jump into the uh, theme settings, um, I've, I've got a, a bunch of global settings here. And um, if we go and edit the brand colors, yeah. um, and uh, let's, let's change the color. I know live demos are generally a very bad idea, but let's see what happens. Uh, so you can see I've changed the primary color to pink, and you can see yeah. this button up here is now pink. I don't know what else. Uh, there's another button that's pink, some list icons that are pink, I think probably section at the bottom. So, yeah, I've been trying to build out... Um, I don't know what to call it, a theme manager, which just allows you to set stuff in a in a global place. Um, yeah. Because one of the, the the common issues that I see in, in the Facebook group is if you if you didn't have something like this, you have to go through each button, for example. And I, I talked about this, I think, in the uh, in the meetup talk, is that you know you, you add a bunch of buttons to your site, and unless they're global uh, modules or only global row or whatever, um, you will have to edit each one individually. And I don't know if you've, you've ever been there yourself, but very close to the, the launch date of a new website, your client decides that a certain color should be a slightly different shade. And uh, immediately you've got to go through each item on the page that, you know, yes. that uses that color and just change it slightly. And you hope that they don't change their mind again. But it, it's a bit of a bit of a limitation of, of uh, Beaver Builders, and I think most other page builders also struggle with this. I think there's the odd one that's trying to solve it in in different ways, but yeah. So by having this, I can change colors, fonts, specifically how buttons look. So these have a sort of border radius that had a rounded effect. Yeah, fonts, input fields, um, stuff like that can all be managed from this one place, and. Uh, I think we said last time that I, I don't think I've written a line of CSS, uh, traditional CSS in my theme. It, it's all kind of handled by Beaver Builder. So it's, it's kind of a quite a, a cool thing in that regard. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just sort of mapping it out and exploring where this can go because, you know, if, if it's useful and I can make it work with, you know, Beaver Builder modules, then it might be something I consider releasing in the future. Yes. And I should ask you about the, the theme and what you're using. Yeah, I'm using a theme called Sage, and it's a kind of developer-focused theme. And the reason I say developer-focused, it's kind of a blank theme. I think there's some others like underscores, which essentially they are a, a foundation to build upon, and, and Sage is exactly like that. But it provides you with a bunch of um, tools to use, you know, to compile your your SCSS, to minify it, to minify your JavaScript, to compress your images and all of this stuff. 
Mm -hmm. But because of this this sort of theme manager, I'm not using any of that. Um, and in, in fact, there's only one file in the theme that I'm actually using um, to, to just output whatever's in Beaver Builder and Beaver Thema. Uh, and everything else is kind of redundant now. Um, and I think it's almost a sign of the times. I think we touched on this again last time. Was, was yeah. that um, you know themes are becoming it, well, it's becoming a different space. I think you know as more people use page builders, the themes are just becoming the shell. They're just becoming the place to accommodate page builders rather than having every single feature bundled into them. Uh, yes, uh, out of the box. Yes, and I've been enjoying some chats that you've been having with Paul Lacey, who we did a strip down with before. And uh, yeah, you're challenging when, you know, does that need a theme or can you do that with Thema? And I, I really like that. And I think you're right. That's the way things are going. We're going to, the themes are going to matter less and less. We'll do more with Beaver Builder and Thema, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think Thema is, is a clever, so, I mean, Beaver Builder itself is a, the way they've, um, they've built it is smart, but Thema it just takes that to another level. It's really clever. And, you know, the, the more you look at it, it's just like, well, yeah, I don't, I don't need a theme. I just have to install it because WordPress needs yes. something to, to run off. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Stuff. Okay. Um, so let's go back to the plugins. Um, I have an anti-spam plugin. So I don't use that on Fueled. I, I use that on my blog, which is on another uh, site in this multi-site network and uh, I've tried various spam anti-spam plugins and I think Adam uh, Lacey again recommended this one and uh, yeah it's just been brilliant it's just picked up everything so my spam has gone down to zero um, yeah which is great uh, then of course these two uh, FEMA and uh, mm -hmm. Beaver Builder and uh, I think I got told off by Beaver Builder support for using the alpha on the production site, but, <laughs> um, but it's it's rock solid. I've I, I, I'm not going to recommend other people do it, but I've not had a a, a problem other than yes. a little styling issue, which um, which they're going to solve in the next one. But yeah, it's it's the alpha of version two of Beaver Builder is just lovely to work with. Mm. Okay, so then we have a CDN. Uh, enabler plugin. I use a, a package called key CDN and um, I don't use it on field because generally I'm working with UK based clients and uh, you know, m m most of the people visiting my site are, are from uh, London, in fact, yeah. so there's no need for a CDN, but I do use it on the WP developers blog where I'm or where people from all across the world are visiting. Um, oh. So it just means that images and scripts and styles are all loaded from a server nearest to the visitor so if you're mm -hmm. in in the states it will find the server nearest to the states and serve those files from there which just keeps things nice and snappy mm. uh, google tag manager i've disabled this temporarily because i was uh, messing around with something but it's it's something that would normally be activated on all sites that i use and uh, google tag manager if you've not used it before is just uh, it, it if you consider analytics as a tag you get a, a script tag that you have to add to your site if you use facebook and you've got a conversion pixel that's a tag that you have to add to your site mm -hmm. what google tag manager does is it allows you one place to kind of deliver all of these tags or, or add all of these tags onto your site so you add tag manager once and then you use the google tag manager console and um, to add all, all of your different tags so you don't need to keep adding bits of javascript uh, to right. site. You just got this one Google console to, to do that from, and it's very, very useful. Yes. Uh, and I, I think I generally have three or four tags per site, um, and it just kind of makes sense to have it all in one place. Mm -hmm. uh, Gravity Forms, um, that's my form plugin of choice. I've I've used it for a long time, and uh, I'm sure there's, there's other good plugins, uh, form plugins out there, but Gravity Forms just has the integrations that I need and it has the logic that I need um, with, the, uh, with the form that, that we saw pop up. Um, mm -hmm. You can easily sort of take the value of whatever you type into a field and pipe it through to a, another form on another page very easily. Um, it also integrates with 
bunch of CRMs and uh, email uh, marketing providers and stuff like that. And um, although it says need a license key, I do have a license key um, mm -hmm. for the support because the support is just excellent. Um, uh, I, I've had a few, well, very few issues uh, in the past two or three years. And, you know, they are just, they're, they're almost up there with the Beaver Builder uh, support folks because they, you know, they just really get under the skin of your problem and just, you know, they'll even write a bit of code for you or, uh, you know, they'll, they'll just go above and beyond to, to help you out. But wow. um, so I just have that as peace of mind. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, we have uh, intuitive custom post order. That's, uh, you know, for example, I have some testimonials here. It just allows you to drag and drop them into uh, an order that you can then output on the front end. So uh -huh. if you're not, querying by the date. If you're not trying to list by the, the date order, you can you can list them by the order that you specify in your uh, WordPress admin just by dragging and dropping them up yes. and down the page. So that's just a, a plugin that I throw onto every site. Now we have uh, the Kraken Image Optimizer, which is a fairly exotic sounding name. Now I've not activated this on this site, but I, I did actually optimize my images another time Maybe it should be activated, I don't know. But I, I generally use this with clients who uh, love to upload huge images. Uh, and I'm talking huge in, sense of, in the sense of dimensions, but also the sense of, you know, the, the file size. So yes. they'll be like 20 megabyte images or 30 megabyte images. And this just keeps them under control. So it will resize the images to, to given dimensions, to dimensions that I specify. Um, yes. But it'll then run it through a, a lossless uh, optimization system and deliver them back. So it's, you know, once you set it up, you sign up for your Kraken account, you activate the plugin, type in your key, and uh, it just kind of works. You don't really have to do anything. Yes. And it's, it's just kept my, I, I got slapped on the wrist a few times with, uh, with, by Kinster, who was saying that I just, I was storing so much data and uh, and that's just solved the problem. So it's really great, really good plugin. Yeah, that's great. There's a lot of competition for that. Have you tried any of the alternatives? Um, not not recently. I, I did try um, one of the free ones, which was E Triple W. Yes. And, um, I think actually that had a cloud solution eventually. But no, I I, I mean you're you're right. I think they're probably all very similar. Uh, I just happened to land on this one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have a redirection plugin. Uh, it seems to be a fairly popular 301 redirection plugin. Um, mm -hmm. So if you've got a blog, for example, and you might delete a post or rename the post, this plugin will automatically redirect the old URL to the new URL. So if, yeah. if you've got stuff indexed in Google, it will forward you onto the, the new correct location, but you can also add manual redirects as well. So. Uh, for example, if you've got uh, if you've got an affiliate link, perhaps um, I don't do that much of that myself. But if you've got an affiliate link, you can mm -hmm. redirect to yourdomain.com slash product name, and that would then forward to your unique affiliate URL wherever it is. Now, I've got this little plugin uh, called Soil. It's by the same folks that make the theme that I use, Roots.io. Yes, uh, and it just has a few little. It's just little little things that it does. It's not anything massive. You'll install it and nothing will really happen. But it kind of it tidies up some of your uh, code and it loads jQuery in a different way. It's, it's just a few little optimizations, and I, I kind of use that with with every site that I build. Uh -huh. Terrible name. <laughs> well, the the, the 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 organization is Roots. Uh, yes. The plugin Soil Sage is a type of herb. Yes. Um, there's another product called Bedrock, which I also use, and they've got another product called Trellis. So they're all kind of okay. Garden yes. Related <laughs> things. Yeah. So I, I have a different kind of image when I think of soil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. The the next is kind of cool. I I I'm only uh, using this on my own site because uh, I'm testing some stuff, but for for client sites, it's quite nice to have. I had a client who destroyed their site. They they'd set a setting 
that I had created. I'd, I'd created this setting, so it's not their fault at all. It's totally mine. But, but they hadn't really twigged as to what they had done. They're, they're just going through making some changes to the site. They hadn't really kind of figured out that what they had done had caused this issue. And it took me forever to troubleshoot because I just couldn't unpick what it was. And eventually I, I got there. But um, since then, I've installed this plugin stream, which just keeps a log of everything that is done on mm. a WordPress site. And uh, every issue that I've had since, I can just look at the log and say, okay, well, this user was doing this at this time. Let's go and check that out. And you can just pinpoint stuff very quickly. So it's a really, really cool plugin for that. Yes. Uh, okay, so we've got SVG support. WordPress uh, isn't so great at supporting SVGs. I don't know if that's changed recently, but if you, certainly previously, if you added an SVG image to your media library, you wouldn't see the image. You would sort of have a gray kind of generic file icon or something. So this plugin just adds a bit of support in the media library, but it also changes how uh, SVGs are output on the front end. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but mm. um, since using it, SVGs have just been much, much easier to, to manage. Yes. Um, user switching. Again, I generally use this on client sites one thing I always do with a client is they have their own user account or, or every user that access to the WordPress site has their own user account. So this kind of helps with the stream stuff as well because you know who's doing what. But um, you can also tidy up the WordPress admin, which is also something I do. I get rid of buttons that are unnecessary and um, oh. I just, just tidy it up and that might vary. So if you've got a, a manager, a marketing manager, they might have access to more stuff than perhaps a, a blog uh, author. And um, this just helps switch to the context of that user and just see what they're seeing. So if they're missing yes. an option, back in quite easily. Yes. Okay, so WordPress importer, we, we, we don't need to explain <laughs> what that is. That's <laughs> no. Just me importing uh, some, some stuff. Um, but this, this one is worth mentioning, WP Migrate DB Pro. It saved me hundreds of hours since I started using it a few years ago. And um, it, if you've got a, a, w a website that you have on your the top of your PC and you're, you work on it locally, but you also have a, a version of that site on a server somewhere, that's, that's a common configuration for developers. You'll work locally and push to a server somewhere else. This allows you to link your database with a single click. So you want to, you've made some changes locally, you just press push up to the server and it goes off and does its thing. And, and yeah. that's in contrast to PHP MyAdmin or whatever SQL management tool you use, exporting it, uploading it, or, or going to your uh, servers, PHP MyAdmin, exporting that base as a backup, importing a new one, doing a find and replace of all the names and stuff using whatever tool you want to use. This just literally does all of that at a click of a button. So it's really, really great for that. But it also has this very nice add-on for your media files as well. Uh -huh. You might add some images locally or remotely, wherever. And the uploads directory where all of your pictures are stored is a sort of gray area because you, you, know, you have your files of the WordPress installation and the files of your plugins, they sort of handle the logic. And then you've got your database, which handles all of your settings and stuff like that. But then you've got this gray area of your uploads. And normally you would have to sync those using FTP or, or something else. But this, again, with the same, you know, you're using the same process as your database migration. You just hit push and it will push all of your media files up. And it, it can do clever stuff like compare what you've got locally compared to what you've got remotely and it can work out what to push or what not to push so it's very very smart and uh, the two of them together are just an awesome combination yeah uh, they're a very smart team of people um okay so the next two plugins are my custom beaver builder modules um the first one is uh it has a bunch of modules in there that I use on all of my sites and all of my client sites. I tend to disable all but two or three of the default Beaver Builder modules. Uh, and it's not to say that the way they're created is bad. 
It's just that we have different styles. I like to do stuff in my own way. Um, and this, this next one is just specifically for fueled.io. And that one is the conversion calculator. Yes. Uh, that you see on the homepage. Yeah. Can I ask you a couple of things very quickly on that? Sure. For that uh, calculator, what did you actually use? I mean, you made your own module, but what was the, the JavaScript that you used for it? So, uh, so I used a, um, a framework called Vue.js, which just makes it super easy to make interactive stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if you've come across jQuery, which is a is something that's bundled into most sites, and Beaver Builder uses it pretty heavily. But um, to create that calculator in jQuery would have probably taken four or five times the amount of code to make it, whereas Vue.js just makes stuff very easy to interact with one another. So I didn't have to do lots of calculations and stuff. It just kind of handled it. Um, and it's, it's very nice to work with as a developer. Yeah. And, and the other question, I guess, is just you make your own modules, which you can do. And it's something I would love to be able to do. And I know a lot of people in a similar position to me who are not really coders would love to do. How do you think we should go about starting well, so there's documentation available on the Beaver Builder website, um, and there's even an example plugin that you can download. It's not the most intuitive to look at, and you certainly need to uh, understand a bit of code before you can dive into that. I am planning, and I have recorded some of this already, but I am planning to release some videos that will take you through building a module and also modifying some of the Beaver Builder default modules as well, because you don't have to just accept what you're given. You can add new fields in there and add your own styles and scripts and whatever you like. So I'm going to cover a few of those topics. So I will send you a link once that's done. Brilliant. <laughs> I wanted you on the recording saying this so we can all hound you for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll keep you motivated. Yeah. Okay. So the next plugin is Beaver pop-ups, and that is another of my plugins that I've put in the WordPress.org repository. And uh, yeah, I wanted to create this other plugins out there that allow you to create pop-ups, but they were a little restrictive on the design of those pop-ups. Um, whereas with this one, you can drag and drop anything you like together, which is, which is quite nice. And it also has a pop-up manager. It has this dashboard that allows you to uh, assign pop-ups to different areas of your site. So you don't have to edit each pop-up to know where it's going to pop up. You just have to look at one place and uh, and modify it there, which I think, with, you know, it's fairly unique. I don't know if any others are, are really doing it, but the, the few that I looked at, you sort of had to configure that in the same place as you configure the design, and it didn't, didn't make logical sense for me. But it, it was also a good opportunity to learn some more JavaScript. So uh, I built that using the same Vue.js uh, stuff that I mentioned earlier. And uh, I, I got a learning experience out of it and the community got a pop-up plugin out of it. So yeah, it was a winner. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love it because, do you know, I mean, ages back when I started doing some videos, I was looking for the solution to this and I found Pop-Up Maker, which is a free plugin and that could work okay with Beaver Builder with some instruction. Do you know what? There was... This, I got 18,000 views on that. So it just shows how popular. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I mean, amazing. Yeah. Uh, nothing like it. So, But this is just so much better because it's using the Beaver Builder interface that we all know and love. So, you know, this is fantastic. I love it. Yeah, great. Um, okay, so the, the next two uh, or the next three plugins, I, I've got this plugin assets. And assets are generally classify as JavaScript and styles. And um, I've kept, uh, I wanted to create a base theme based on the Sage stuff that we talked about earlier. And uh, I often found that I'd, you know, make sites and I'd use this base theme. And, you know, when, when I had to then use it for another client, I'd have to rip everything out again. So by doing it this way, I've got my base still, but all of my CSS and JavaScripts are housed in this plugin instead. So I can keep that theme clean and move it around and use it uh, on different projects. So that's, uh, that's the reason for doing that. The config plugin is where I have stuff like my custom post types. I, I register those in a bit of code in there. Um, but I also 
um, maybe add some filters and hooks for plugins such as Beaver Build, uh, Gravity Forms. Uh, I tend to, to put these in their own plugin as well. Again, keeping it out of the functions.php file and uh, keeping it in its own little um, container. Yeah. And for Bernard Gunu, if, if that's how you say his name, uh, you didn't really mean it about putting your um, custom post types in there, did you? And that you're moving to pods. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Pod, yeah, of course. <laughs> how, how much can we edit this video? <laughs> Got to keep Bernard happy. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's yet another thing I don't need. <laughs> I can remove these plugins as well. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Pods. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to to using that a bit more. And uh, yeah, I'm sure Bernard will his ears will prick up with the sound of that. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So so those. Uh, well, we've now established they're both redundant. <laughs> um, we've now got um, WPD toolset. This is, um, well, as it says, some development tools for WordPress theme development. This, um, it, it does a, a bunch of stuff. I install it and you, you don't see anything on the front end, but it, it gives me uh, some code that I can just reuse in different projects. Um, trying to think of some examples, but, but one, for example, is um, if, uh, if I'm working locally on my development server or I'm working on a development server on, a, uh, on an actual server, then it's got an email kind of filter thing in there which stops emails from being sent out. It traps them and uh, sends them off to another service called MailTrap. And um, uh -huh. that means that I can see emails that WordPress is sending out, but I'm not uh, spamming my my clients, customers with those same emails. So I, I have a, um, a few customers who use WooCommerce and you kind of have, uh, you know, uh, order confirmations and uh, delivery status updates and all of this stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I learned the hard way basically <laughs> by accident, then accidentally sending out these these emails to my my clients' customers. So I've now put some stuff in place that sort of filters that and traps that mail instead of sending it. Yes, um, but it does a bunch of other stuff as well. And finally. Um, Yoast SEO, and uh, I'm not using it so much on Fueled. SEO isn't a, a big strategy for me there, but um, it seems to be a default. I've, I've used this plugin since, I, I don't know when, I think version two something, and it's just, uh, you know, it's part of the furniture. It comes along with me into every project and just gets installed by default. Um, I don't know if you use it as well. I do. Well, I, I kind of switched. When I switched, I used to use the Genesis default because I used built all my sites with Genesis. And then when I adopted oh, yeah. the Beaver Builder theme, Yoast came in then. But actually, I kind of missed the point. You'll probably know about this. Though. I think uh, Yoast upset some people just previous to me jumping on board because he removed, I think, some of the functionality from the free plugin and moved it to the professional one. But I... I don't know what's missing because I think it's a fantastic plugin. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I, I, I know there's there's this there's been a bit of controversy along the lines with, with different things like that, but I don't know the specifics. No, well, I've not missed anything, and I do use it, and it's 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 much better than what I had. So, yeah, I'm happy. Um, and that's it. I think uh, in terms of in terms of plugins, and we've touched on hosting. Well. Probably I just wanted to finish off and just say, you know, since the launch of the site, what's gone well with it and what hasn't gone so well? Well, as you said before, when I, when I first released it, I wasn't qualifying visitors or, or prospects well enough. So I was getting a flood of people and I was spending, you know, I was spending money on this traffic and it was coming through and I improved my advertising targeting a bit more. But then, you know, I was, I was still getting too many uh, prospects through the funnel. So by adding the qualifying section, I, I've improved that. Yes. But uh, on the whole, I, I think it's converting really well. I don't get a lot of traffic to it unless I run a campaign. But when I do run a campaign, I'll only have to run it for a few days before I get enough leads to find a customer. And that was certainly the case. I, I picked up a, a pretty good contract three or four months ago. 
and that's kept me quiet for that length of time, which has been quite nice. So it's it's certainly doing its job. Great. And your um, campaigns are they largely with Google Ads, or do you use Facebook? Yeah, I I use Facebook um, for clients and some other stuff, but for this, it's just been um, Google AdWords, and it's 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 kind of you know per click, it's kind of expensive, but once you get a good client through, then it it more than makes up for for that cost. And yeah, and, and I, in a way, the, you're different to anybody else I've had on these kind of strip downs because it's effectively is a landing page and uh, where you're um, getting your traffic in through advertising. And and I don't think there's anybody else that I've interviewed who's done that. So uh, th- we could have another conversation about that entirely because it's something I don't know about. But uh, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. Hey, is there anything that we've missed off? Um, <laughs> good question. I, I don't think so. I mean, it's a fairly simple site. Um, there's there's not a lot of moving parts. So yeah, you did show people the actual second page you got, which is the sign up form. I don't think so. We didn't kind of take a look at that. Are you able to just go no, and click I mean, over? Yeah. Um, let's have a look. <laughs> it's it's pre-populated that that um, URL that we we popped into the pop up, um, and it's just a, a fairly straightforward above the fold kind of list of benefits and a form on the and a testimonial from one of my clients brian dean who uh, is a big seo blogger and a lot of people know him so i put his face on there and uh, a quote that he gave me and it, it just goes down if, if you need mission you can just go down and get more more stuff it tells you what what stuff's going to be included in the in the consultation and mm-hmm. yeah another testimonial and a final form cool that's it Brilliant. Thank you, Doug. Thanks so much for spending the time with me and going through through everything on this site. I really appreciate it. Not at all. It's and, been uh, fun. Yeah, and we'll have to meet up for another pint soon. Definitely. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to hold you to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, better say goodbye to everyone. So goodbye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>